It's good to be amongst the living. As if you have a work to do for the Lord. I guess if you don't, you might be depressed. Uh, or something to that effect. Uh, what is that? Ashley Judd? When took her own life because she couldn't handle it no more. And we got that going on immensely now because we living in that time. And man, I, I sure hate to feel like that. Ah, we have hope. We don't have to feel like that. We have the word of God. We have Jesus Christ living in us. And if you don't have Jesus living in you, you need to seek for him to be living in you. All you have to do is to make him your Lord and Savior and be obedient to his word and ask him for what you need, which is the Holy Ghost. We living in a dying and sin sick world and we need to build God's kingdom here on this earth. That's why he called us out of darkness into the marvelous light. To work in the vineyard. Reaping the harvest. For the harvest is plentiful and the labors are few. We've got the apostate time. We're going to take you back to the Old Testament. I was in love with the Sunday school lesson. This morning, I mean, yesterday I used to study my Sunday school on Sunday, uh, Saturdays just before I preach, get my sermon message together. But it was the freedom from sin. And it came out of the same um, scripture I read last week, if I'm not mistaken. It was in uh, Romans 6, yeah. I think I was in Romans 5 last week. But, uh, no, to 6, when you continue in sin, God forbid, sin separates you from the, the, the your Lord and Savior. And he has everything we need. Everything according to life and godliness is right here in this book. And if we make him our Lord and ask him for whatever we need, seek and ye shall find, knock and the door shall be opened, ask and it shall be given. I said that backwards, but ask and it shall be given, seek and ye shall find and knock and the door shall be opened. That's all we have to do. He's our father and he wants to take care of us. And as the time winds down, as things get rougher, you see how fast time is moving. It said he's going to shorten the time for us. He's going to shorten it. I mean, time is going to, time is going to be winding up real fast. And he's going to shorten the time for us. Get all that we need out of him to make it in. The days will be shorter. It, it, it'll be coming fast. It's in short terms. The days are getting short. Praise God. But we got to be on the, we got to be ready. We got to have our bags packed. We got to do the work that he called us to do. And we got to be ready. And we got to endure to the end. The evangelicals that have been exposed the apostasy is in the church and it's always been from the time of the, the Paul and uh, Peter and Timothy and John and James was writing they were talking about the apostasy the apostasy is where it's a great falling away. Men go about establishing their own righteousness. Jesus had to tell the Pharisees that's what they done. The Pharisees of the day call themselves evangelicals. 
It's happening, saints. And if you can't see it, read your word. Study your word. <clears throat> Listen to a God believing preacher like yours truly and the rest of us that are preaching the kingdom of God is at hand. Let's go to the subject matter. Now, let me, let me get you a word of prayer. Uh, Father God, in the name of Jesus, we come humbly submitting ourselves before your throne room of grace and mercy. We ask that you hide your humble servant behind the cross at Calvary and that you speak through me to your people. What thus said the Lord, Lord, use me like never before because there's a dying and sensitive world out there, Lord, hungering and thirsting after your righteousness. And you said you would feed them and that you would use me. You said you would justify. You would qualify. And you would glorify me to speak forth your word to them. Father God, we ask that you give them ears to hear what the Spirit is saying unto the churches and a hunger and a thirst after your righteousness whereby they might be filled and wisdom and revelation of the knowledge of your Son Jesus, which is the Word of God. And Father God, when this Word goes forth, somebody might ask, what must they do to, to, to get saved, delivered, healed, sanctified, and set free? In Jesus' mighty name, we pray and we thank you, Lord. Amen and amen. I can't read that. The place of the throne in the coming kingdom. The place of the throne in the coming kingdom is God. Larry. Ezekiel 43. Get your Bibles. Ezekiel 43, 6 through 12. A man's treasure is where his heart lies. If you believe in this word, if you believe that there's a heaven and a hell, if you believe that God is going to prepare a place for you, a mansion built in heaven, and streets paved with gold, if you believe <coughs> in what I'm telling you, you need to get your Bible and not a phone Bible. That's when you without that Bible tugging it around. Get your Bible to study. <coughs> Excuse me. You need to be having that joker all marked up and everything because God will be sending you messages and send a study Bible. Get your Scofield study Bible. And get your Sunday school book. You got to, man, you got to invest in your Holy Spirit. You're the temple of the Holy Ghost. You got to get this word deep down in you. This word, if you get to study in this Bible, Jesus told us, he said, once he told a person, you think you have eternal life. Search the scriptures in them, you think you have eternal life. But they are they that speak of me. It tells us about this kingdom, the place of the throne in the coming kingdom. What you blew that up or my eye got clear? Okay, Ezekiel. 43, 6 through 12. It's talking about this kingdom. Ezekiel is prophesying to the people that went into exile into Babylon, the Israelites or the Jews, and he speaks to them about this kingdom. If you search the bridge, it's always talking about this kingdom. It's 2T kingdom. It's the kingdom of God and it's the kingdom of this world. We're in this world, but we're not of it. Because we are in this kingdom. God is trying to get us from the, the Adam that was uh, uh, made a quickening soul by God blowing his breath into him. And uh, Jesus came 
to bring us back to that point before Adam ate of the fruit of the knowledge of good and evil. Because he gave the kingdom away to the devil, to the enemy, the prince of the air. And now we got is by Jesus Christ, he's trying to give us, get us to that quickening spirit. Him, Adam and God used to walk in the cool of the evening to gallop. That's that spirit man. And that's what it is within us. He keep talking about this time. He's prophesying to the children of Israel. This passage of scripture. Let's go to the scripture. Six, Ezekiel 43, six through 12. And I heard him speaking unto me out of the house. And the man stood by me. And he said unto me, son of man, the place of, the, of my throne and the place of the soles of my feet, where I will dwell in the midst of the children of Israel forever. And my holy name shall be, shall the house of Israel no more defile, neither they nor their kings by their whoredoms, nor by the carcasses of their kings in their high places. He's talking to them bad about how oh, your integrity, your, your lying. Man, the, the, the Proverbs 12 and 21, abomination. Lying lips are an abomination. Man, we see how they lie. And, and I mean lie profusely. And they will tell a lie and they will continue in the lie. We see how they're stealing from the government like Al Capone. Them. Man, Donald Trump, man, it, Al Capone, he didn't have nothing on, Al Capone didn't have nothing on Donald Trump. He does everything the same and lie. Putin will have you killed like uh, Al Capone. Donald Trump wouldn't mind it either. I don't know how many people he'd probably kill too. But, <laughs> man, that's the world we living in. Leaders are being exposed in high places, and they keep telling us that nobody's above the law, and uh, we see a different story. Hey, in their settings, in their, in their settings of their threshold, by my threshold, and their post by my post. That's what I'm telling you. It's a, you, you. They got a post and I got a post. They got a threshold. I got a threshold. That's what God is telling them. Is it not integrity? And what I told y'all about the truth or the license thing for me. I love the truth. What is truth? Truth is my word is truth. I'd like to you to stay in my word. I'd like you for to be have integrity one toward another. Love one another as I have loved you. Love me with all your heart, mind, body, and soul, and your neighbor as yourself. Love is the key. They have even defiled my holy name by their abominations that they have committed. Wherefore, I have consumed them in mine anger. Wow. Jesus told the Pharisees in Sunday school a couple of weeks ago. He's telling them about their sale and that, that they were, but they, 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 we ain't never been in bondage to nobody. They forgot Egypt, right? That's where the, where the Passover came in. You was in bondage here. I don't know who told you that different. You, Ezekiel talking, talking to them now. You said they're in bondage in Babylon. Man, they've been in bondage. God always hear they cry, and uh, they repent, and he brings them out. 
heard a man on the radio preaching today, and he was telling me, God is not consumed with our sins because he gave us a way to get out of it. Is repent. Repent. Repent of your sin. Godly sorrow worketh repentance. Don't let the enemy that comes to be the accuser of the brethren keep you in your uh, sinful state. God will restore the years that the canker were and the pomegranate and, the, <laughs> and he will restore you. Oh, I am an example of that. All of that that I've done in my past has been thrown into the sea of forgiveness and we don't have to worry about that anymore. We go forward and quit looking in the rearview mirror because that's what the devil wants to do is take you back to that rearview mirror experiences. He wants to keep you in sin so you can stay separated from God. So he can sit up there and destroy your life because he come to kill, steal, and to destroy your life and take you to hell with him. The day you hear his voice, harden not your heart. God has a plan and your hope is in him. It's the, the making him your Lord and Savior. Man, the children of Israel is a good example of how we are today. How they've been treated. And this is how he taught them, told them. And this is what he'll do to us today while we having a hard time. People of God going to have some hard time, but we'll know how to go through. We won't be sitting up there killing ourselves. We won't let that depression overcome us because it's going to come. The enemy is going to send you strong delusions. He's going to make you make it like, man, you ain't no way out. It's always a way out with Jesus. Ain't nothing too hard for God. He's able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we can ask to think according to the power that worketh within us. And our, uh, that power is our faith. And without faith, it's impossible to please God. Nine. Now let them put away their whoredoms and the carcasses of their kings far from me, and I will dwell in the midst of them forever. This is God pleading his case to the children of Israel. This is how he feel about them. He will plead the case, man. He will be right there for them. All he wants you to do is come on in and let's build the kingdom. Deny yourself, pick up the cross and follow Jesus. He's the, the, the way, the truth, and the life. He is the one that healeth us. He's the one that will give us that abundant life that we're all hustling, bustling, trying to get to. Jesus is the one. He's the one that we need. Thou son of man, show the house to the house of Israel that they may be ashamed of their iniquities and let them measure the, 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 the pattern. And if they be ashamed of all that they have done, show them the form of the house and the fashion thereof and the going out thereof and the coming in thereof and all the forms thereof and all the ordinances thereof and all the forms thereof and all the laws thereof and write it in their sight that they may keep the whole form thereof and all the ordinances thereof and do them. All the obedience is better than sacrifice. Show them, man, <clears throat> tell them, that's what we do. We preach, we teach. Ezekiel, he's a God of strength. His name means the God of strength. He comes to strengthen the children of Israel. He was a priest, prophet. 
slash prophet. And he come to Taiwan and, and to show them how to get the, their self out of their situation that they had put their self in because of their whoredoms, which is sin, is this sins. 12, this is the law of the house. Upon the top of the mountains, the whole limit thereof round about shall be most holy. Behold, this is the law of the house. God comes to clean us up and to make us holy. He comes to make us his children. He taking us out of that dark and sinful world and putting us into this, this, this new world, this kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven. John the Baptist came in the New Testament preaching the same stuff as Ezekiel numbers preaching. I, I did finish, right? Yes. Okay. Uh, he's teaching the, the kingdom, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. He's he prophesying. He's telling them how to do it. He fixed the institute. Jesus is coming on the scene that we might have life and that more abundantly because when we were not a people, he's going to make us a people. This was to the children of Israel. He kept telling them that it's going to come with time. Give me Hebrews. It's going to come a time when this is going to happen. Hebrews 3, 10 and 30. 31. 10 and 31. Hebrews chapter 10, verses 30 and 31. Hebrews chapter 10, verses 30 and 31. For we know him that hath said, Vengeance belong unto me. I will recompense, saith the Lord. And again, the Lord shall judge his people. The watch that Hebrews 10, 30, 16, 31. and 20. Hebrews 10, 16, and 20? Yeah. I thought you said 30 and 31. Okay, hold on just one moment. I ain't even got Hebrews 10, 16, and 20. Yeah? Yeah. Huh? Yeah. Oh. Hebrews chapter 10, 30, and 31. Okay, Hebrews oh. chapter 10, verse 16 through 20. This is the covenant that I will make with them after those days, saith the Lord. I will put my laws into their hearts, and in their minds will I write them. Verse 20. By, uh, by a new and living way, which he hath consecrated for us that, uh, through the veil that is to save his flesh. Mm, mm, mm. I did that again. I was supposed to be in the end. <laughs> All right. This, this is what he came to do. He came to demand, make us the temple of the Holy Ghost. We have been, come, we are being used. We've been bought. We've been blood bought. When we made him our Lord and Savior, we're serving to, to be able to do what the scripture tells us, tells us to do. He wants us to be obedient is better than sacrifice. He came to make, to set the captives free by this word. We are supposed to be made free. Free from what? Free from sin. Sin is the what it, it bounds us. Sin is what keeps us on that path of, uh, of destruction. Sin keeps us in sin and that Satan has control, total control when we're in sin. He's laughing, having a good time. I drove, he asked the devil going to and fro. God asked him, where you going? He said, to see who I may devour. He said, have you considered my servant, Job? It's got, can God count on you? Can, can he stick the devil on you? Can he make an example out of you? You have the power. He said, whatever you bound on earth shall be bound in the heavenlies. Whatever you loose on earth shall be loose in the heavenlies. Tell the, the devil to bring it on. Huh? You, you resist the devil and he'll flee anyway. But you have to have the power. And the power comes through you repenting and making him your Lord and Savior. And asking for the Holy Ghost. 
and you'll be the temple of the Holy Ghost. And whatever you need to fight the wiles of the enemy, you have. Great is he that is in you than he that is in the world. We got to come, saints. Times is getting worse. Yeah. Times is getting worse than they have ever been, and we got to be ready. It's going to come on everybody's door. I was talking about every time me and my wife seemed like we have having one thing after the other. She got a couple of friends she go to the beauty shop with. One is in the hospital, another one had a car wreck this week. This week, right? I mean, Jesus, I'm, it's, it's happening to everybody. You're not alone. Finances get strained, what you say? And all of that. But God will bring his children through. Psalm 91. A thousand will fall at your side and ten thousand at your right hand. But it won't come down to me. And God told Job, I mean, God made a statement in Job that he said, I don't know why I'm letting you, uh, you got me letting you uh, do stuff to Job without cause, for no reason, no apparent reason. All that to Job, the Lord said it was for no apparent reason. Remember, Job was a perfect and upright man, and he was going through, and we would go through. Jesus died on the cross. God whooped. He was innocent as all get out. In fact, the, the man that sentenced him wiped his hands of it. Because who wanted it? The Pharisees wanted them. Those that called themselves which Oh, Jesus. Give me Isaiah 29 and 13. Isaiah, yeah, 29 and 13. But, man, things that just happened is just for a test. And great, like I say, you go through the valley of the shadow of death, you, you should fear no evil. God will be with you. All of this that I go through, I still, man, I still have my joy. Don't let him steal your joy. Don't let him steal your peace. It, it gets rough sometimes. Don't tell me I get some depression. Depression falls on me too. Sometimes I just don't want to get out of the bed. You know what I'm saying? God is always with you. Read it. Isaiah chapter 29, verse 13. Before the Lord said, For as much as this people draw near me with their mouths and with their lips do honor me, but have removed their heart far from me, and their fear towards me is taught by the precept of men. The evangelicals, the Christian right, the people that sit up there uh, talking about them defending babies. What is they doing? I mean, who gave them that power? Who told them to do that? God didn't say he needs somebody to fight his battles. He said he'll fight ours. Didn't he say that? He said that. So give back that scripture up. Uh, he said, for as much as his people draw, they, they, they love him with their lips. They, they're always telling you they're doing it in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Jesus ain't told you to fight that fight. That's not your battle. Your battle is the, the battle within you. You working out your soul salvation with fear and trembling. The woman at the well. Give me what the woman at the well. Where's she at? Oh, John 8, 10, and 11. Yeah, John 8, 10, and 11. Save her. Man, you without sin, y'all act like y'all ain't got no sin on y'all. Oh, they don't sin. Oh, they trying to put a, a pro-life, but they got guns. They <laughs> bad people to kill baby. That's her baby. That's her body. They talk about freedom. But they want to take your freedom. 
They have the right to take your freedom. This is how arrogant these people are. And then in, in the name of Jesus, the scriptures say, they love you with, with the lips, but their heart is far from it. Read, read what she said. John chapter 8, verses 10 through 11. When Jesus had lifted up himself and saw none but the woman, he said unto her, Woman, where art thou? Where art where are those thine accusers? Accusers. Hath no man condemned thee? Uh, condemned. Verse 11. She said, No man, Lord. And Jesus said unto her, Neither do I condemn thee. Go and sin no more. Accusers of the brethren. When I told you about that, that's what they are. They're accusers of the brother. They can tell you about your sin. They got that moat in their eye. And they don't know it. They don't know it, but they see that speck in your eye. Condemn thee. Has no man condemned thee? Uh, that's what Jesus said. Has no man condemned thee? She said, no man, Lord. And Jesus said unto her, neither do I condemn thee. Go and sin no more. Jesus can sit up there and tell the woman about her sins and let her go. No, they have to do something to you. They have to condemn you. Down. Jesus said, Jesus didn't, but they do. Ain't that something? They done made their God over Jesus, right? They done made themselves God over Jesus. Matthew 15 and 8. Matthew 15 and 8. Yeah. Oh, there it is. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> then scroll for it. All right, we're going to get y'all out of Matthew here. Matthew chapter 15, verse 8. Paste it in there for Verse 8, this people draw nigh unto me with their mouths and honoreth me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. Man, we will know them by their fruit. They act out whatever is in their heart. The heart is deceitful and desperately wicked. And who shall know it? God gave us discernment in Malachi. And we shall both to have what said he is in us. And he going to show us them. We are known by their fruit. They will act out what's in their heart. It's desperately wicked. It's going to show it. Praise God. Ezekiel 33 and 31. Ezekiel chapter 33 verse 31. And they come unto thee as the people cometh, and they sit before thee as, may, as my people, and they hear thy words, but they will not do them. For with their mouth they show me much love, but their heart goeth after their covenants. covenants. <laughs> absolute power corrupts absolutely. We got, uh, what's that, uh, Second Timothy, is that Second Timothy 6, where it said the love of money is the root of all evil, which some cover that after and err from the faith, you see them. Right, that movie they, they, they used to, for two decades, they to print prop, uh, prosperity messages. Not soul winning messages, prosperity messages. They weren't trying to get people in and clean out. He, Jesus told the Pharisees the people are trying to get into the kingdom and y'all won't go in and y'all hinder them from going in. That's what they do. Power, absolute power. Men down there, the governor, <coughs> DeSantis, <coughs> he done made himself God down there. Now he's Putin now. And, and they do this out in the open. They have no shame. Like the children of Israel in the wilderness and in the, in the captivity, no shame. He just telling me, man, we burning books. We don't want y'all to know the history. Yes, uh huh. And we taking all of you people, the transvestites, homosexuals, whatever. We don't like it, and we ain't gonna let you do it. Not in this state. <laughs> Takes the same way. Man, they have made themselves God, and they condemn folks. 
and they <laughs> and they had made themselves God, and they talk about how much they love God. Come on now, Ezekiel thirty-three and thirty-one. We did, did that. that just, uh -huh. Okay, we did Matthew seven twenty-one and twenty-three. No. Okay, mm -hmm. heaven. Okay, Matthew chapter seven verses twenty-one through twenty-three. Let me copy this in for one. That way they can read it at home. Okay, Matthew chapter seven verses twenty-one through twenty-three. Now everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord. Shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doth the will of my Father which is in heaven. Verse 22 Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? And in thy name have cast out devils, and in thy name done many wonderful works. And then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that worketh iniquity. Mm -mm -mm. That's 23. That's a. Uh, yeah. And, <clears throat> okay. Yes, that's it. Okay. Uh, um, many will come in his name, man. Mm -hmm. That's what. That's who they are. They coming in in the name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. They doing all of this in the name of Jesus. They don't read the book. They don't know no, nothing about the book. They went about establishing their own righteousness. That's what they did. <laughs> And these people, they called themselves wise, but they became fools. In the book of Romans, man, they have set up there and established their own righteousness. It's only one way to do it. God is a jealous God, and he ain't going to be able to do you serving two masters. You're going to hate one and love the other. Undoubtedly, they must hate God. Because they don't do nothing that God tells them to do. In fact, they're contrary to everything that God tells them to do. Look at the laws. and They are suppressing laws to keep people from... The Constitution said the people folks vote. They do it willingly. Out in the open and ain't shamed. Like children in Israel. They are not even shamed. Hebrews 10, 30, 31, we did that. Uh, which one now? Say that one more time. Hebrews 10, 30, 31. Uh, no, we have not. Hebrews 10, 30, 31, yeah. Sure. Fall into the hands of, no, yeah. For, okay. Yes, we did. I forgot to mark it off. We did? No. Remember, I read, well, you, I read no, it. No, read, read it again. Read it again. Read it okay, again. I will. Hebrews chapter 10, verses. I'll cut you short. Hebrews chapter 10, verses 30 and 31. For we know him that has said, Vengeance belongeth unto me, I will recompense, saith the Lord. And again, the Lord shall judge his people. It is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. Man. God got that. That's his job. Our job is to, to, to try to get people to come into the kingdom. And the kingdom is within. The kingdom is a spiritual thing. We're that second Adam. We're trying to conform to the image of his dear son that walked in the spirit and didn't fulfill the lust of the flesh. Whatever the flesh wants, the money, the fame, the whatever, man, we denounced that. We did that. We, we put it on the cross. We died. We put that seed in the ground and it died and it became some blossomed something else. Jesus Christ and him crucified is living within us. He's trying to shape and mold us into this image of his dear son through the spirit. And we die to self and selfish gain and covetousness. All of that is against God and his word. And it seems all if you do is read the Bible, study the Bible, because a lot of people just read it. You got to study this time. It's talking about Jesus Christ and him crucified and him living within you and you dying to self. I beseech ye therefore, brothers, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God which is your reasonable servant. This is this kingdom. 
the under the the subtitle is is uh, the throne the throne in the coming kingdom the throne in the coming kingdom this is the coming kingdom this is where we had it this is where we at it was the grace which is the church and the kingdom all intermingled in one and it's going to take us out. He's going to rapture his people after the seven year, uh, seven year tribulation, the great three and a half years. He's going to rapture us out of here. It's going to be a, a thousand year millennium reign before he has stepped down on the Mount of Olives and been tell the Jews, now y'all ready? Because y'all sit up right now and miss the mark. And if you go to the 24th chapter of Matthews, everybody looked up and is redempted. They seen the people being raptured up and they do, they mourn. So why did they mourn? Because they missed the mark. God say he going to save Israel. But all you evangelicals, baby, y'all, y'all missed the rapture. Y'all going to have to go through the millennium reign. And that second death, boy, Lord have mercy. With Hebrew, we finna wrap it up. That was the last scripture, Matthew 7, 20. Hmm? Romans 10 and 3. Romans 10 and 3. 10 and 30. 10 and 3 is what I'm talking about. Okay, get, get your Romans 10. 10 and 3 or 10 and 30? 30, 10 and 30. Romans 10 and 30. Yeah, 31. 10 and 3, why, oh, why you ain't got this? Oh, that ain't Roman. I'm sorry. Yeah, that's from Roman 10 and 3. I'm sorry. That's okay. <laughs> yeah. You had me lost there for a second. I'm Roman like, 10 okay, and 3. We're we, we sorry, y'all. We're fixing to get y'all out of here. This is it. This last scripture. Okay, Romans chapter 10, verse 3. For they being ignorant of God's righteousness and going about to establish their own righteousness have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God. That's it. Man, this is it. It's all in the book. You got to, man, it is no other way. You got to go through the straight and narrow. It's two roads. You can go in that big one and you can make all the laws and the, and you can do it your way and all of that. And you can put Jesus' name on it. He said he know you. you, you man, you're going to be knocking. He said he get away from me, you workers of iniquity. Don't get caught up in that evangelical stuff. They are about money and power. Not about soul winning nothing. And they will condemn you to death. <laughs> it's telling, telling people what they can and what they can't do. Let's get out of here. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you that this word that you have gave them, given to your humble servant, the throne in the coming kingdom. The place of the throne in the coming kingdom. That you spoke to Ezekiel. To give to the Israelites. About this coming day. About this coming day. From the time that you sent forth that word. Father God. We received that word. And we're going to walk in that word. Because it's that coming kingdom. It's, it's here. We're in it. And we need to uphold it. And Father God, we ask that you send labors in your vineyard to reap the harvest. And Father God, we thank you for the souls that heard this word. And that add, somebody add, might ask, what must they do to be saved, delivered, healed, sanctified, and set free? In Jesus' name we pray and we thank you, Lord. God bless y'all. If anybody don't know Jesus in the pardon of their sin, man, you can't wait till tomorrow. I'm telling you, I'm just something. Somebody else died that I know. I know this week they're dying all around me. I know I'm in that age grab that, that yes, but these are people that's just some younger, a lot younger. 
but they're dying. And they're dying. Like I said, she, she killed herself, I guess. They said mental, yeah. But, man, you don't have to do that. Jesus got you. Just give yourself to Christ. Pull your heart into just learning his will and his ways. Get you a preacher. I'm available. I will, uh, I will nurse you through. I will help you along. I know how it is. I've been there. I've done, man, like I said, I, I'd have been from the guttermost to the uttermost. And I can tell you some things of how to get out of it. It's all in Jesus Christ. Believe in him with all your heart, mind, body, and soul. Say this little prayer with me. Father God, I know I have sinned. I ask that you forgive me of my sins. And that I believe that you died on the cross for the remissions of my sins. And on the third day, you arose that I might partake of the tree of life. And I believe that. And I make you my Lord and Savior from this day forward. In Jesus' name we pray and we thank you, Lord. Amen and amen. If you said that little prayer with me, go to Acts 2 and 4. Read up on the day of Pentecost. And go to Acts 5 and 32. And you'll see where he said, be an obedient, you'll get it. They say you get it when you get when you when you say that little prayer, sinner's prayer. But that does not. That gives you access. God ain't going to give you his, his, his spirit and you still wrestling with whether you believe or not. No, he can give it to you for actually really giving up the ghost. You're done. You're ready to deny yourself, pick up the cross, and follow him totally. Not lip service. You said that's in a prayer. It's a lot of sinner's prayer was spoken of lip service. Just like he said, get away from me, you workers of iniquity. If anybody don't have a church home, this is the place to be loved, uplifted, and taught the word of God. And if you want to increase your finances, if you want God to protect your finances, I got a message that I need to bring to y'all. And I'm trying to hope my finances will be good enough for me, but my finances isn't good enough. I don't know why I keep throwing that out there because I'm trying to get this building. <laughs> and I, I know it's going to cost, and I need, uh, <laughs> but that's all right. God's going to supply all my needs according to his riches and glory. But if, if, if you, you want to get your finances in order, they got the stock market. It's up and down. One constant I've had for the 25 years I've been preaching since 1997 is I pay my tithe devoutly. And God said he proved him. Herewith it will not open you the windows of heaven and pull you out of blessing. There won't be room enough to receive. He will do it. Prove it. Zale. Give us an offering. Tie, tie, tie it here. If... <clears throat> If all lines are clear, let me get y'all out of here. Let the sweet communion of the precious Holy Ghost rest rule that abide until we return at the appointed time. We forever give your name the praise, the honor, and the glory that is so due you. In Jesus' name we pray and we thank you, Lord. Amen and amen. This is a 501c3 ministry, and so everything that you give in this ministry, you can write it off. On your taxes. Guess they still do that. Lord bless me. I don't even have to pay taxes. Period. God bless. That's his doing. Have a blessed day. And have a blessed week. Bye bye. <clears throat>